Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. Starting something new today. I'm your host, Kim Thompson Pinder. So, right now, I am streaming the recording of this podcast to Facebook. So, trying something new in terms of getting more visibility for the podcast. Now, if you haven't joined me on Facebook, you can find me, Kim Thompson Pinder. You can also join the Author to Authority group on Facebook. And uh, love for you to connect with me there. Now, today, I want to share with you my monthly book review. And today's monthly book review is on Revenue Growth Engine by Daryl Amy. Now, Daryl is an amazing client of mine. And when we worked on this book, oh, did it ever help me in my business? And I love what Daryl talks about because he looks at growth in your business from a lot of different perspectives, including the combining of marketing and sales, what each one of them is, and how do you use them to triple your business? And I love the fact that he talks about having doubling and tripling your business and how do you do it and what are the realistic timelines to do that? He doesn't give fluff in here. He doesn't give you hype and say, you know, oh, you do these few things. He gives you a step-by-step system for you to grow your business. And I want to read a little section for you here, because one of the things he talks about is uh, your ideal client. And that's one of the starting points is knowing who your ideal client is. Now, if you've listened to the Author to Authority podcast for any length of time, you know that one of the things I teach in authority marketing is that core marketing message. Who do you serve? How do you serve them? And who are you in relationship to the first two. And uh, Daryl's got, Larry's his best friend, uh, selling from the heart. Daryl has a whole chapter on figuring out your ideal client. And I actually used the section of his book in my book, Author to Authority. So I want to just give you a sneak peek here uh, into the book. So chapter two is define your ideal client. All clients are not equal. Your ideal clients are more valuable than other clients. Vilfredo Pareto was a European economist famous for the 80-20 rule. In the late 1800s, he knows that 20% of the people in Italy owned about 80% of the land. This pattern began to show up in many different areas, especially business. Sort your list of clients by annual revenue. Add up the revenue from the top 20% of your clients. If you have 1,000 clients, add up the revenue from your top 200 clients. If Pareto is right, and he almost always is, you will discover that these ideal clients are the ones driving your business. What would it mean if you could get more of these ideal clients? Recently, I was leading a company through a revenue growth workshop. After discussing their growth goals, we began to talk about their favorite clients. Going around the conference table, each of the key leaders shared a specific client that they loved. For each client, I asked what they liked about the relationship. As we wrote the names of these clients on the whiteboard, along with their characteristics, several trends began emerging. These clients valued the relationship they had with the company, saw them as more than just a vendor, and were open to new ideas. These clients were slightly bigger than the average customer. Because of their size, they had some unique challenges which the company could meet. These clients also had the potential to purchase additional products and services from the company. Next, I asked about their average bread and butter clients. In stark contrast to the ideal client, most of these clients did not value the relationship. It was not uncommon for them to solicit proposals from other vendors at each contract renewal. While most of them renewed, they used competitive quotes to erode profitability. Others left for competitors. Either way, the sales team worked hard to get lower and lower profits. After the sale, many of them were demanding. Some were outright unreasonable, causing frustration in the service department. 
Next, I asked the team what the average person purchase amount was for from their average client. In this case, the purchase was 7,500 followed by 2,500 revenue for a service contract. Over 10 years, if the client renewed their contract three times, the company could expect 30,000 in revenue. However, many of these transactional companies changed vendors to get a better deal, so the real number was lower than 30,000. In contrast, I asked about the revenue from my deal clients. The sale averaged 75,000 with 25,000 in trailing revenues. Over 10 years, the company expected to make 300,000 from this client. Trust and value are the foundation of these relationships, so the renewal rate was much higher. Pareto's 80-20 rule in full effect. The majority of the revenue was coming from a handful of clients. So I want you to be thinking about that. Who are the 20% of your clients that are bringing in 80% of the business? And how are you treating them? Is all your time and energy going into the 80% that only bring in 20% of the revenue? So anyway, I'm gonna give you something to think about over the next while. So I highly recommend that you get Revenue Growth en Engine by Daryl Amy. It is available on Amazon and the link will be in the show notes. And this has been Kim Thompson Pinder from the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on the very next episode. Bye now.